Okay, I wanted to continue. Um, I want to go ahead and continue with 43. This is uh, a continuation in a, way, in a way of the work solution I have in the other video. Um, so you might want to browse through that even if you weren't too confused about 43, just real quickly. Um, we have S, we calculated V and A, we did A of 1, and then one thing we did was we figured out when the velocity was 0, and that happened to be at times 2 and 3. And in that problem, they asked us to calculate the acceleration at those two instants. And I noticed that they were exactly equal and opposite. Well, let's graph all three of these functions. Here's the position function. It's a cubic. And you can see there's two points where the derivative is 0, right at 2 and right at 3. That's places where, the, where it's temporarily horizontal, and that's exactly places where we're turning around. Notice that it, it, this is, it's labeled as x and y because I didn't change it, but this is really t, and this is really s. And so as t increases, here s is increasing, so we're moving to the right in our usual number line kind of sense. And then temporarily s decreases, so we're moving the other direction, and then we change around. This would be the, the kind of curve the kind of thing we did in the in the test of um, if you draw it just on an S number line it would go right then left then right now here's the velocity that's a parabola uh, it's a quadratic curve and you notice that the velocity is reading zero exactly when these guys are flat that confirms that those are the turnarounds and here the positive velocity corresponds to rightward motion a little bit of negative velocity leftward motion and then back to positive velocity rightward motion the acceleration is an even simpler curve. It's a straight line. And there's something rather special about that. It's a zero acceleration right here that changes. Now remember what the second derivative measures. Negative second derivative means concave down. That's this part of the curve. And positive ac acceleration second derivative means concave up. The point where it's changing concavity is called an inflection point. OK, so let me write that down. Um, and that seems to be at 2.5. So at t equals 2.5, that's a change in concavity, which is an inf called an inflection point. Um, but I wanted to address one particular issue that's special to the interpretation of motion in this graph, which is when are you speeding up or slowing down? Now, speed up, slow down, that sounds like acceleration, and that's definitely something that, that makes sense. That you have to know something about the acceleration. But the acceleration, let me make a point down here. Acceleration, um, let me make that a little better. That's equal to change in velocity. And velocity includes direction information, plus or minus. It is not equal. Um, it's not equal to the change in the speed. We have to be a little more careful about change in speed. Here's an example. Um, right in here, I'm moving to the left. And if you look between 2 and 2.5, I'm moving to the left. And um, the acceleration is negative. And yet I'm going from not moving at all, zero speed, to moving an appreciable amount where this thing is sloped. But here's the trick. I'm, the velocity has gone from zero to a negative number. And if you ask people, is that increasing or decreasing? Well, it kind of depends. If you just talk about strictly on a number line, zero is bigger than this negative velocity. And so I'm, the velocity is decreasing. But if you talk about the magnitude of the velocity, that's the speed, just the absolute value. Are you going fast in either direction? It's going from 0 to a non-zero number. So the speed is increasing. So right here in 2 to 2.5, the velocity is decreasing, but the speed is increasing. Let me put, let me uh, stop the uh, zooming in here. So let's put that in. Um, when, one, when t is between a 2, sorry, and 2.5, then that's when the velocity is decreasing, but the speed is increasing. And that typically happens. And velocity is negative, decreasing and negative. Whenever the velocity is negative, 
then that's the tricky part. That you can have velocity becoming a more negative number, and that's a bigger speed, but in sort of the wrong direction. Acceleration says, hey, that's a decrease in velocity, and so you have a negative acceleration. So one way to, way to do this, which is uh, actually pretty cool, is you actually have to pay attention to not just the sign of the acceleration, Uh, whoops. We look at the sign of V and the sign of A. In this region from 2 to 2.5, what was happening was that even though the acceleration was negative, this velocity was negative as well. So the acceleration says, I'm going more leftward. That's what acceleration negative really means. And if I started out not going at all, that's just going to mean I'm going to go faster and faster leftward. That's what negative velocity means. That's this guy. So they were the same sign. And so if they're the same sign, that's going to be an increase in speed. If they're the opposite sign, let's look at an example of that in the graph. Here, they're opposite in sign. The acceleration has gone positive. You'd think, I should be speeding up then. But the velocity is still negative. That just means I'm going to kill that negative leftward velocity down to zero. That's here. I'm sloping and then stopping sloping. And then eventually the positive acceleration makes me speed up because it's agreeing with a positive velocity. So the punchline is pretty simple. When the acceleration velocity have the same speed, same sign, then you get an increase in speed. If the, when they're the opposite sign, then you get a decrease in speed. And so that's the sort of subtle point I wanted to make so you can help you do your homework.